like to welcome Tom Holmes from Eddie Looks today. Morning, Tom. Hi there. Hi there, John. Hi, everyone. I will leave you to it, Tom, if that's all right. Perfect. Share this screen. Okay, so morning everyone. I, uh, I am going to be talking through um, why perhaps uh, I believe that LED inset light traps are the future and not simply just a, uh, another UV lamp in a box. Um, let's start actually with some introductions to firstly to myself. So those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Tom Holmes. That's, that's me when I don't, don't have ridiculous facial hair on um, for, for, no, for November. Um, certainly less impressive than the rat's whiskers that Alex was talking about earlier. But uh, I am the global portfolio lead for insect light traps for the Pelsis Group. And that means I essentially oversee all aspects relating to the category of uh, insect light traps, ILTs, across our, our group and, of course, into the UK. Now, um, as part of the Pelsis Group, uh, we have uh, we, we, we supply um, products and services into the professional pest management sector into the UK and wider afield through our Edelux distribution brand. Um, and uh, within that, you'll, uh, of course, see our key channels, our key, key categories of rodent management, insect management, insect light traps, bird management, and application equipment. And many of you will be familiar with our leading brands within those particular fields. So our AgriSense um, monitoring brand for insects, uh, network bird management and B&G uh, equipment for application, uh, application equipment. But it's of course the insect light traps and our insecticutor and for about 12 months now, um, the Brandenburg brand that we, uh, the business that we own, um, that we'll be focusing on today. So first of all, I just do want to tackle the issue of terminology and simple question is, is what do we call these things? Um, there's many terms that are used in our in our industry, industry and they, they kind of used interchangeably. So you'll have heard the terms of fly killer, um, which leads on to EFK or electric fly killers, insect light traps, fly lights, that's a, a term that is predominantly used over in North America, uh, fly trap perhaps, and then my least favorite, can't stand it, but fly machine, it does get used. Um, I'm, as you've gathered, I'm going to be using the term insect light trap. I feel that's the best term for what we've got. Um, and why is that? Well, fundamentally, it's, to, it's down to how they're used because insect light traps or ILTs, they, they can be used as control. Um, so if there's an application where you simply try to want to control the uh, uh, infestation of flying insects, yeah, ILTs will do a job. They can also be used for population suppression. So if there's an application where there is an ongoing issue with flying insects, which is never going to be eradicated, ILTs can be used to help try and maintain uh, that population to a suitable level. But they really come into their own. Their biggest value, of course, is a, is a monitoring tool as part of a broader uh, IPM approach. Um, and with that in mind, I believe ILT or inset light trap is, is the best terminology to, to, to reflect the fact that they're, they're monitoring to allow us to understand the root cause and then deal with it. So we're going to be using ILT for the, uh, for the duration of this, uh, this presentation. So first of all, bear with me if, if this is your bread and butter, but I want to just cover some, some basics, make sure we're all on the same page with regards to, to ILTs. There's fundamentally three uh, subcategories for, uh, for, for ILTs. There's, we've got glue board or back of house units, decorative front of house units, and killing grid or zapper units. And they all do um, a similar thing in terms of the using UV or ultraviolet to attract the insects um, to the product. Um, but the where it's different is how we then deal with that insect. So the glue board units, decorative units, they have a sticky glue board built into the unit, which once the insect is attracted, holds and retains the insect for inspection. Typically the decorative or the front of house products, both the UV source and the, uh, the glue board is hidden away from view. So it's a little bit more discreet. Killing grid units um, are of course use a, an electrified killing grid. So once the insects are attracted in, it then zaps them, which typically fall into a, into a catch tray at the bottom, which, which can be removed for cleaning. So let's dig a little bit deeper into to UV, arguably the most important part of, uh, of, of, uh, of an ILT. What does ultraviolet mean for us? Well, essentially, if we look at the spectrum here, um, we'll start at the top, um, it's split into two areas, 
for our human eyes, visible light, light that we can see. So we're talking about blues, greens, yellows, etc. But also invisible light, which our our eyes aren't sensitive uh, sensitive enough to pick up. So you see, we've got some numbers there on our spectrum. So anywhere between four hundred to eight hundred nanometers, um, and a nanometer is just a measure. It's it's about one millionth. Uh, see, one millionth of a millimeter. So we're talking tiny, tiny um, uh, fractions here, but. Um, that, uh, that wavelength uh, uh, is, is critical in terms of what, what the, the type of light that is created. So anywhere between 400 up to about 800 uh, nanometers wavelength, our eyes can pick up. That's where we see color. Anything lower than that, uh, our eyes with a shorter wavelength, our eyes just aren't sophisticated enough to pick it up. And in that spectrum between 200 and 400 nanometers, that's what's referred to as the, the UV spectrum. So starting at the bottom left there, UVC, which is used for germicidal or for sterilizing, through into the middle to 80 to 315, which is UVB, used for tanning. But the area we're interested in is, is this, UVA, around about 315 to 400 nanometers wavelength, and specifically around about 365, 368 nanometers. That's the wavelength that is most attractive to, to most species of flying insect. So... That wavelength, the UV, why it's, what's all the fuss? Why is it so important to us with regards to ILTs? Well, it's essentially down to this. So this is a close-up of, uh, of, a, of a housefly, and you can see its, its set of eyes there, which actually, if I zoom in, um, are made up of thousands of tiny little light receptors, um, which are incredibly effective at, at uh, capturing or, or, or seeing short wavelengths, which is why flying insects can see uh, uh, the short wavelength of, of UV that us humans simply can't see. Now, Alex earlier talked about uh, the vision for, for rodents being particularly poor. The, the sensitivity of flying insects is great for measuring those, for, for gathering those short wavelengths, but not so great um, for, for seeing uh, a detail. So a human eye might see an application, something like this, to most species of flying insect, they would see it like this, very fuzzy, very blurred, but proportionally compared to their size, they see considerably further away than us humans do. Um, so that's some background in terms of how the flies, flying insects see and the importance of UV for that. We touched earlier upon how I believe ILTs are predominantly and, and their best value is used for monitoring. So let's explore that a little bit. Um, here we've got a glue board from actually an Insecticusa Infinity 2 uh, LED ILT and a uh, couple of things to point out. Obviously, first of all, you can see we've got a uh, we've got the grids on the glue balls. The benefit of that is it helps us with our monitoring and our insect investigation. It helps me to count uh, the insects on there if I want to keep analysis of how many insects have been caught every time I go in and service this product. And I can start to see any big peaks in activity there in terms of volume but also understand any trends. Particularly as I then start to have a look at the, the insects that have been caught there and our uh, entomologist team, I've had a look at this board and picked out a good number of different species of flying insects that have been caught on here. And of course, if I start to see a significant peak in a certain species of insect, by monitoring it on the glue board, I'm able to start to think about what the root cause may be. So if it's a, for example, a small flying insect uh, for a fly, uh, fungus and that, something like that. I, I know I've probably got some issue with sanitation that I need to deal with inside the building. Whereas if it's a larger flyer, night flyer, um, I've probably got a, a, an access problem and I need to deal with that. So as a monitoring device, ILT is a hugely, uh, hugely useful to us. And then to bring this small, the short section together, what does that mean? What does it mean specifically in the UK um, for, uh, for legislation? Why, why do we need ILTs? Well, the uh, BRC Global Standard uh, for food, food Safety, Issue 9, was, was launched earlier this year, very helpfully talks about the need for pest management. So it discusses um, the, that the whole site should have an effective and preventative pest management program, and resources should be available to respond rapidly to any issues which occur to prevent risk to products. Now, that sounds like monitoring to me. And a little bit later in the document, it talks about specifically for insect killing devices, pheromone traps and other insect monitoring devices shall be appropriately cited and operational. So essentially we need ILTs in there. Um, and interestingly, if there's a danger of insects being expelled, um, 
alternative system, uh, alternative systems and equipment shall be used. So that to me is essentially saying anywhere that we have, and it's a sensitive area where there's food prepar preparation, uh, we should use glue board monitor devices rather than killing grid zappers. So we've done the background. Hopefully we've got, got ourselves up to speed. So let's get into some detail now. And, and this is where I start to make the case, hopefully, why I believe that LED insect light traps are the future. So we've got a couple of examples on the screen here, the Brandenburg genus fly LED unit at the top right there, and the Insecticuta, Insecticuta Infinity 2 uh, LED unit at the bottom right there. So reasonably familiar looking to us, except both of them are using LED technology to attract those insects. Now, I believe there's, there's three reasons why um, uh, LED ILTs are the, are the future for us. First of all, power consumption and running costs. Um, secondly, environmental sustainability. And thirdly, the efficacy of the products. So what we're gonna do now is, is dive in a little bit more detail about each of these. Uh, each of these. Before we do that, however, I think I just wanna take a few moments just to, uh, to talk through this, this key point that not all LED ILTs are the same. And uh, you know, be very candid with you. There's there's plenty of of options on the marketplace now for LED ILTs, all doing things in slightly different ways. And I just want to take a few moments to, to sort of sow the seed of of how you may consider which products, which ILT uh, LED ILTs you might want to invest in, you might want to use going forward. I'm going to use the analogy of if I want to buy a car. Um, I've got some to understand what it is I want to get out of that purchase, how I want to use it to help me make an informed and sensible decision for what I want. So bear with me, let's see if this analogy works for us. So first of all, I may need to consider what is the build quality of that car? Is it gonna be robust enough to do the job I want for long enough? But also things happen, are they, are they consumable and possibly even spare parts gonna be available for me going forward? So perhaps, Perhaps don't buy a rover. I also probably wouldn't buy a car that had such old fashioned, outdated technology that it's just not attuned to, to modern lifestyles. It's not delivering me the performance or the benefits that, uh, that I might want. Equally, probably wouldn't buy a car that, let's be honest, fundamentally has a, a basic design flaw. Um, I've got to understand what it is I'm trying to achieve with the, with the car on, in this case. Uh, and is the design fit for purpose? Price is always an important course it is, but equally I wouldn't necessarily look for the cheapest option out there if it's really not going to deliver what I want it to do. So I've got to think of the long term and yes, uh, price is important, but perhaps let's consider whether I'm going to get the right functionality of that out of that product. And of course, I certainly wouldn't want a product that its reliability is 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 questionable and frankly is going to result in me having to give it a damn good thrashing because it keeps breaking down. So reliability is hugely important to us. That image probably wouldn't mean anything to our, our international uh, uh, attendees here, but maybe to a few of us older heads, that may to, might make a little bit of sense. Um, but finally, what I may want to do is look at something that is well-built, is robust, um, has modern current technology in it, and as a result, delivers everything I want it to deliver, but in a sustainable manner accept that I may have to pay a little bit of a premium for it up front, but in terms of the results I'm going to get over the life of that product, that's clearly the way to go. Now, hopefully that analogy is sort of sown some seeds and might be useful for us. Um, but if we move then on to the LED UV source, critical part, as we said, of, of any ILT, how, uh, how are we going to manage uh, UV creation um, within an LED uh, ILT? First thing to say is uh, actually staying with the uh, with the analogies of motor cars, but uh, I'm not a great believer in quoting quotes, but uh, actually this one works for us in this instance. So Henry Ford, the founder of the Ford Motor Company was supposedly quoted as saying, if I'd asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses, quite a well-known quote. Now, whether Henry Ford actually said those words or not, the, uh, the principle is an interesting one, which is, if we're to develop new technology, use new technology to, to progress uh, ourselves, um, why would we take what is already existing and then build upon that? For me, it makes much more sense to go back to ask the question, 
what is the fundamental problem that we're trying to solve, then let's use new technology to come up with a better, more efficient solution. I think I'm probably done to death with analogies now, particularly around cars. So let's get into what that means for us in terms of ILTs. So first of all, for over 60 years or so now, we've all as an industry been used to using fluorescent uh, UV lamps within ILTs to, to attract and then ultimately capture or, or manage uh, flying insects. So this is a very crude sketch looking at the side of what's, what that might look like. So we've got our, our circular uh, UV fluorescent lamp at the front there, um, positioned just in front of a yellow glue board. And that lamp is producing 360 degrees of UV light output. Now, as we move to LEDs, there's some certain routes we could go, and there are a number of products available in the marketplace that have, have approached it in different ways. One route we could go down is to say, okay, well, we're going to take that four of a uh, UV fluorescent lamp, be it a 15 inch circular lamp or whatever the, the four may be, we're essentially going to create that form, but with LEDs in it. And we're going to position it just as we always have in front of that uh, that yellow glue board. The big difference, of course, is that with LEDs, typically um, the LEDs are directional. They point in one direction. So in this case, on this sketch, pointing forward. And the challenge here, of course, is that uh, what we're doing in this scenario is we're putting LEDs into an ILT that was designed for a fluorescent lamp with 300, 360 degrees worth of output. So we must be missing a trick there. We'll come back to that. Another scenario is we could say, look, this has worked for us for the last 60 years, having 360 degrees worth of output. Um, so let's replicate that. Let's get an LED uh, lamp system that, uh, that provides 360 degrees worth of, of irradiance, UV output, and again, position it in front of the glue board, just as we already have. Well, the challenge there is we're essentially just replicating the effects of the fluorescent lamp, both the good that comes with it, but also the bad. We're not, we're not going back to the source of the original problem and trying to find a solution that would, would uh, improve us on every level. So I think that's probably quite limiting. So to map it out in terms of the choices we have in front of us, uh, if we start with our fluorescence, our 360 degrees worth of, of UV output, in terms of the LED solutions, the routes we could go down, we could go for that route of having those LEDs pointing forward, positioned in front of a glue board. We could look to replicate the 360 degree output of, a, of an LED source, again, positioned in front of the glue board. Now, what the two brands that we have within the Pelsis group have done is, is, is go back to basics. What is the problem we're trying to solve? Let's put uh, some research and development into that and try and find a more uh, effective solution. So within the brand of brand, the technology that we have after three years of research and development is to have a relatively compact LED strip that points actually towards the glue board and then reflects either off the glue board or off an aluminium reflector back out into the environment, which kind of diffuses the, the LED light. And after those three or so years of development, the and just over 9,000 independent, 9,000 uh, trials um, to fine tune the, uh, the LED output and the fly catch, uh, we've got systems that, that work fantastically well and we'll come on to how they're comparable catch to, uh, to fluorescent lamp products. Within the Insecticutor brand, uh, with the Infinity family of products, um, we're essentially putting a very compact LED strip behind the glue board. The glue board has some holes in it. We saw a picture of that glue board earlier. Um, and essentially what that's doing is drawing the insect onto that glue board. So we're removing the risk of the insect coming into the IoT and flying around the UV source, then flying back out. We're drawing the insect straight and quickly onto that glue board. So there's some considerations for us in terms of how we use, leverage the power of LEDs as a UV source within an ILT. The other scenario which you may see and is available in the marketplace is, is something like this. It's a um, fluorescent, uh, sorry, it's an LED tube, but, but the design of it, the form of it matches closely the exact form of, a, of, a, uh, of an, a fluorescent lamp. So in this case, a 15 watt uh, uh, 50 watt, 18 inch fluorescent lamp. Um, and essentially the problem we've got here as we touched on is that these, in this scenario, the, the, there's two scenarios. The first one being that we're gonna put this, this LED lamp into an existing ILT, an ILT that is already designed, but has been designed to take uh, fluorescent lamps with their, with their 360 degree output. And the, the problem here, of course, is that the efficacy, the fly catch of that ILT 
was based upon, designed around 360 degrees worth of output. So if I put this lamp, this LED lamp, even if it's in the factory where it's, it, the ILT is manufactured, if I put that directional lamp in there, I'm not, uh, I'm essentially replicating, uh, replacing 360 degrees worth of output with a directional output. So the efficacy needs to be reconsidered. It also makes it more challenging for service technicians in the field because, because it's directional. I'm going to have to consider which direction do I want the LEDs to point. So if I've got a ceiling suspended unit or a wall mounted unit, I may want it pointing forward or from both sides. Equally, there are some models, ILT models in the field, which are so flexible in how they're mounted that I may need the uh, light output to face in one direction. I might need to point it upwards or forwards. Uh, which may not even be possible with the configuration of these lamps. So that's the problem. The second scenario is that we say, okay, well, these, these lamps, these LED lamps, I'm going to retrofit them into ILTs that are in the field. So I'm going to go to site, I'm going to take out the fluorescent lamps that are in an existing ILT and replace them, retrofit them with these LED lamps. Now, the challenge with this is all the points that we talked in, in, in the first point there, but also they're quite restrictive at the moment. And I'm not aware of any LED lamps that, for example, can work both on electronic and magnetic ballast uh, ILTs. So at the bottom there, we've got examples on the left of uh, electronic ballast and on the right, the uh, slightly older technology of magnetic ballast with starters. Mm -hmm. So those LED lamps won't work in both of those as far as we're aware. So I've got to know what is the ILT that I'm servicing. Is it an electronic ballast or magnetic? Because I need to know whether this LED lamp is going to work in there or not. There's also LED lamps in the marketplace that only work on single lamp ballasts, only single lamp configurations. So if I've got two or three fluorescent lamps in there, my LED lamps aren't going to work effectively into their optimum. So at the moment, with the technology available for retrofit lamps, there's some real challenges about putting those in, either in the factory or out in the field. So I've given a lot of background there to, to ILTs, to UV, to, uh, to, to how we might use UV uh, LEDs within the ILTs. Let's now get into the guts of this, which is how do we, uh, uh, I'll make the case now for why LEDs and ILTs are the future. So you remember the three points we had. First of all, the power consumption and the running costs. Then we have the, uh, uh, the sustainability angle. And finally, the efficacy. Um, let's talk about those in a little bit more detail. So first of all, power consumption and running costs. Clearly right now, um, the electricity use, the power draw, the running costs of any electrical device has never been more important. So many people are struggling with this, but it's also a massive issue for uh, businesses, be that a small cafe or restaurant through to large food processing pharmaceutical companies. Anything they can do to reduce the running costs of their, their operation is a real positive. So what we've done here is take um, a, uh, a robust, reliable, but ultimately all uh, ILT using old fashioned technology in it uh, and measured the power cost, the running, uh, the power consumption and therefore the running costs of that over, a, uh, over a, 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 an annual period. And then also done the same exercise for a contemporary, well-designed, well-considered um, LED and set light trap, in this case, the, the Infinity 2. And what you can see, there's a huge difference in the cost of running just one unit over a 12 month period, 81 pounds worth of saving per annum for, for if we were to swap that unit out. And of course, what that means is for establishments that are slightly larger, perhaps they've got 10 units in there, over 800 pounds worth of savings per annum, 50 units over 4,000, 100 units over 8,000 pounds saving per annum. So we're getting to a point where within a couple of years, the savings here will um, uh, pay for the cost of replacing these units. So in terms of power consumption, running costs, the move to a well-designed, well-considered ILT is a, is a huge, bonus, uh, huge bonus, huge bonus, huge benefit to us. In terms of uh, environmental sustainability, well, there's lots, uh, lots of benefits here. Very quickly, we've got lower power draw. We're going to be therefore using less energy, we're having to burn less fossil fuels, we're having to create less energy to power the uh, ILTs. We're going to have no mercury content. Every fluorescent lamp, even the most efficient out there, have a small amount of mercury in there. Mercury, a toxic material, which needs to be specially uh, carefully removed at the end of life of that lamp, but 
as a service technician, how many of you are going to tell me that you've never dropped a lamp and smashed it and there's mercury gone into uh, 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 escapes into the environment? So no mercury in LED, uh, LED, LED ILTs. We've got less waste. We don't have to replace those glass fluorescent lamps every year. Uh, we get a three-year life, which also means that theoretically we're having to transit and uh, move around with the spare parts less often which in turn means less transportation emissions, be that you, service technicians, moving, moving uh, more materials around, or indeed from where the, uh, the UV source was produced through to, to you and your businesses. And to bring all of that section together, ultimately, all of this combined means that with an LED uh, ILT, we have significant CO2 emission savings and, and using the uh, uh, the, the, the government's GHG conversion factor, which I'm happy to talk through in detail if anyone wants to. The estimate over the life of uh, ILT, we're talking about 163 less, kilograms less of CO2 we're putting into the environment, so a 69% saving. And then the final of our third point is, is efficacy. Um, so um, the, the power draw on the energy saving and the sustainability credentials are, of course, hugely important to us going forward. But that's no good if we're not catching and, and being able to monitor uh, a comparable amount of flies. So first thing to say, if, if any of you are considering doing your own in-house trials, you want to test a fluorescent lamp model versus uh, an LED, it's a principle that, that you need to understand that you mustn't test them next, literally next to each other. There's something about the, the, the use of LEDs next to fluorescent, fluorescent, which means fluorescent will always catch more when they're positioned next to each other in a false environment. Uh, and we found that throughout, throughout our uh, three years of R&D. But in real world environments, and this is the important part, in real world environments, well-designed and considered LEDs, uh, LED LEDRTs, will and can deliver comparable catch to traditional fluorescent models. So as an example here, we've got a, a, a real world environment. This was an egg packaging facility. And we ran a trial. Uh, one of the trials we ran was for to test a traditional 45 watt model against uh, three uh, LED models available on the marketplace. And what we found was that uh, our Infinity 2 product caught a comparable amount of flying insects over the, the period to that of a, uh, a traditional 45 watt uh, ILT, so three 15 watts. Um, now there were a couple of uh, uh, ILTs, LED ILT models there that didn't fare so well. And we believe that's because they were using the technology where they'd put a directional LED strip in position in front of that glue board. And those are the, the, the points we talked about earlier. So because of the research and development we've brought into this, we can be as confident as we can be that uh, the, the technology we use is comparable flycatch, comparable efficacy to traditional products. There's actually a fourth reason that uh, I've, I've, I've kept in my back pocket that we need to talk about as to why um, LED ILTs in the future. And that's the risk of ongoing supply of fluorescent lamps and components. Now, there's quite a lot of talk in our industry about um, uh, legislation, whether fluorescent lamps are going to get banned. Well, actually, for us in Europe and the UK and Europe, that's not a problem for now. Um, whilst general purpose fluorescent lamps will be phased out in 2023, UV lamps have an exemption under the Roche Directive through to 2027. So legislation wise, we've got another four or so years of their availability. But our issue is uh, the availability. So UV lamp manufacturers uh, are going to lose somewhere in the region of 50 to 75% of their, their total uh, volume of fluorescent lamps because they're going to stop making general purpose lamps, which means they have, they're buying everything in smaller quantities, their pricings are going to go up. And ILT manufacturers such as ourselves, we've already seen significant price increases over, over 2022. We're also seeing uh, the manufacturers are seeing fluorescent lamp components and, avail uh, and availability. So I know a uh, a, uh, a, a, well, a large manufacturer was enabled to source the end caps in the middle photo at the bottom there, um, which caused delays. But also as a manufacturer of ILTs, we have recently been informed that uh, the manufacturer of, of, of end caps, the ones you see at the bottom right, that go in the ILTs, uh, the lamp holders, they're being discontinued. So everything is pointing towards that, that people are starting to ease out of this sector. So at best, we're gonna see significant price increases for both the, U, the fluorescent lamps and the components, at worst, they simply won't be available. So to pull all this together, um, we talked about the three reasons, the, the three fundamental reasons, energy saving, sustainability and efficacy. 
We added in the fourth, the ongoing risk of supply of fluorescent lamps and components. So in summary, I think for me, it's pretty clear that actually not only are LED insect light traps the future, given this context, I would argue that insect, LED insect light traps are the now. And that is me done. I've pushed my time, but that's me done. That's great, Tom. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, you can see the changes in the industry um, with these units coming on board and, um, you know, especially the energy saving is, is going to be a big thing with the price of energy going up and, um, and, the, and the cost of these uh, tubes potentially mm -hmm. going up as they start to become, um, you know, less available. Um, like you say, we, we are quite a small UV user, um, uh, oh, sorry, fluorescent tube user as to what you think about in hospitals and things once they start discontinuing them big bulk items. Um, you know, it's it's a knock on effect for for us in pest control. I Absolutely. Think. Absolutely. Um, which is uh, going to be going to be interesting to see how it all pans out over these next few years. Like I say, we've got got them four years to go um, before 2027. Yeah, four, four years. So theoretically, they legislative wise, they'll continue to be available. And, and we're predicting that will be the case. But unquestionably, the pricing is going to go up significantly now. And you know, we could be talking three, four times the price. So we as an industry have to start preparing for a world without fluorescent lamps. Um, and a move to LED in the long term, of course, is the way to go. Um, but we've got to manage that transition. Yeah, it's good. Um, do you think we'll use it like the modern technology? Will it change and we may use EFK units, uh, sorry, the um, LED units differently in the future? Or will we start to design them to keep them similar to how we use them now? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that's kind of the point I was alluding to that, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's been an ongoing debate for years, but for me, uh, ILTs are, are fundamentally a monitoring device. Let's catch those insects that see where, so we can understand the root cause and deal with that. Um, I think that will continue to be the case, but there's still a place for aspects of control. There's still a place for aspects of um, population suppression. Um, but I think that's the point, back to that Henry Ford quote. For me, we shouldn't as an industry be constraint to say well let's take what we've got the an ILT form and then uh, essentially retrofit LEDs into there let's go back to basics we've, if we're going to use LEDs it freezes up to get significantly different forms significantly different function benefits out of these if we design them cleverly good uh, just a question from Mark are there any EX rated units available that's a great question. So um, it, it's, it's very niche, of course. So, so uh, ATEX rated or uh, um, ILTs that are appropriate for ATEX rated potentially explosive environments. It's a niche market, but it's an important one. And the, the bottom line is long term, absolutely. That's uh, um, uh, within the, the Pelsus Group in Sector Union Brandenburg, we will be developing LED ATEX rated units. It's going to take a bit of time, uh, but the good news is for reasons we've explained in the short term our existing uh, ATEX rated fluorescent lamp units will continue to be available. Good. Excellent. Uh, and I think that's